Okay, welcome everybody back to the Financial Advisor Workshop. Today from O'Fallon, Illinois, we have a very successful uh, financial advisor who started a firm and grown that firm quite nicely, Brett Gilliland. Brett, welcome to the Four Star uh, Financial Advisors Workshop. Yeah. It's uh, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Well, good. Well, um, we've met some really interesting people on this uh, podcast series, and I, and I suspect from our pre-discussion that this is going to be no different. So Brett, tell me uh, a little bit and tell our viewers a little bit about how you built your practice. Uh, you started, I believe, at Northwestern in the insurance world, but you guys went in a different direction, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We uh, So tomorrow actually is our eighth anniversary. So March of 2014 is when we started the firm Visionary Wealth Advisors. And uh, we started, we came out, uh, me and my business partner, Tim Hammett, we were at Northwestern Mutual. He was in wealth management. I was an advisor, but also was a managing director there as well. And uh, really just decided that, you know, we wanted to start this thing called an RIA, you know, and I was looking for my career and what I wanted to accomplish. And I always tell people that, you know, I, I was successful doing the financial advisor stuff, but also uh, wasn't finding that um, kind of that need, that, that search I was looking for internally. And I kept coming back to this thing called an RIA, Registered Investment Advisor. So uh, made, made a call to Tim Hammett and, uh, and then kind of now here we are eight years later, uh, we started this, uh, this firm called Visionary Wealth Advisors with a dream and, and a vision, hence the name Visionary. And uh, we're really excited about the stuff that we're able to do with our clients and, and our advisors. Great. So how has the business changed then? You were doing somewhat limited financial advisory work that, uh, that, that like a, an insurance firm will let you do. But how have you expanded all that? Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing. I always tell people, Brian, it's like I knew the sandbox was, say, this big, but I knew the sandbox could be, you know, this this massive thing. And uh, and so you're right. I mean, I think at the insurance world, you kind of um, you, you go down a path, right, of what you're trained on. A lot of you, sh you start when you're 23 years old, like I did, and, and you go down this path. And so we were really able to, when we started Visionary, to, to really focus on that client relationship you know, no conflict of interest, all that kind of stuff. And so um, that was the biggest thing for us is to really focus on the, the needs-based financial planning, setting the same side of the table as the client. Um, you know, software opened up a whole different, another world of software and the financial planning stuff that we do. And it's just been really fun. I mean, working with you probably, you know, you've been in the business a long time too, and you know that you kind of become part-time psychologist, part-time life coach, part-time, you know, investment advisor. And I think those are the things where we really, really enjoy and what makes us a little bit different uh, is that we're able to spend a lot of time doing that. And, and those are the things that we love to do with our clients today. Yes. Now you mentioned software. So you're with a big shop and they have their prescribed softwares and you have to use what they say uh, and then financial planning. So tell us how that's all expanded. Like what are you using now and, and how does that be better serve your clients than the previous uh, iteration of your career? Yeah, so um, we use either it's it's up to the advisor what they feel most comfortable with, or if, you know, if they were, if we're recruited from another firm. But uh, our platform provides uh, Money Guide Pro or eMoney. Uh, so those are the two okay. financial planning softwares that we use. And and you you know as well as probably most of the listeners that listen to this they know. But for those that may not, I mean those are the two you know, I would call them the most prestigious, if you will, the financial planning software that's out there in the independent space. And it does a really good job of really just about anything you would want to be able to do for your client. You can help them with that. And, and so we've found a lot of success with it. And this, the, the, the way you can use it, you know, you can dial in the, the, the dials and more aggressive, less aggressive. I want to do this social security or less social security. And so it really is interactive with the client. And I think that's what the clients like too. Nice. Nice. So, so you say the advisors all you all use have the choices and they use the different things. Have you seen any other interesting models that have developed within your advisor group um, on, on ways they use that? Well, I, no, I think it's it's unique to each individual. But I think as a as a firm, as a vision, we call it the visionary way. Um, I think it's just starting from scratch with the client and building this plan out. Um, you know, again, having no preconceived notions, you're not selling any products, anything like that is just listening. I, I heard early on when I was about in eighth grade from my history teacher, he said, you have two ears and one mouth, let's use them proportionately. And, and so I think if we can be better listeners for our clients, and, and I know early on when I was 22, 23 years old in this business, I thought I had to come at people and let them know how much I know. 
and was probably doing more talking than listening. And I think as I've experienced over the years, the more I can listen, uh, the more we can build that plan out for clients. So I think that's probably the most critical part. We, we all are great financial advisors, probably they're listening to this, this show. Um, but I think it's that listening thing that's most important, right? Because I always say every client has Pandora's box and it's our job to find the key to open that Pandora's box and then open it up and then let that thing go. And, and as our mission statement says, is to help people achieve a future greater than their past. And I think that's what we're able to do is helping them. Not that their past is bad, uh, but everybody wants a future that's greater than their past. And so we got to work really, really diligently to make sure that happens. Supercharge it and change the direction for even more positive results. That's right. That's right. That's great. Well, good. Well, then, then now that you're independent, um, you had all the investment products in Northwestern, but now you have an open architecture. So what has changed there uh, as far as like once you, once you, you know, kind of run everything through a money guide pro or e-money and you come up with a plan, what are you doing now differently than you were doing when you were at Northwestern? Yeah. And again, I think it's, um, we were doing great things at Northwestern. So I, I have nothing bad to say about those folks. It just, for us, it did create this more open architecture, less, uh, around product sales and things like that. And, and so I think it, it, again, is going back to that listening, diving in and really being able to spend time with clients. I think that's the biggest thing. And, and there's all the stuff that we can talk about in this industry, but for us, it was less about, um, awards and recognition and running from meeting to meeting to meeting. And I got, okay, this meeting has to be 45 minutes so I can get to that meeting. It's more of like, all right, let's take a deep breath, slow down and let's spend an hour and a half, two hours with the client if needed. Now, some clients don't want that, right? They want the 30 or 40 minute meeting and get on with their day. But I think it's, it's the biggest thing is, is really slowing down so we can speed up and really diving into the client's lives, not just looking for one niche that we want to work in with them but helping them with all sorts of stuff. So it may be business planning, like I jokingly said, but also serious life coaching, you know, what's going on with junior over here and, and, and the marriage and whatever may be going on is really diving deep with clients and finding the things that are most important to them and helping them achieve those things. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, that's really something that you've been able to expand on um, all the personal coaching and such. How, how does that fit in? And you know, give us some examples of, you know, things. Not using any names, of course. Sure. But, uh, yeah. You know, the types of folks you've been able to counsel in a different way. Yeah, and I, I, for us, it's it's really going through and, uh, like I said, not to keep saying this, but spending time. So here's a real life example. So this was just a probably a month and a half ago. Uh, maybe a couple of months now, you start to lose track during COVID, don't you? At time, it seems like sometimes. You do. You sure do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was, it was having a discussion with one of our good clients. And yes, we talked about their investments. Yes, we talked about their asset allocation. We talked about all the, the important stuff that we do every single day. But like this conversation went into um, employee reviews, right? What do we do for employee reviews? How are we helping our clients? And that turned into a 45 minute conversation of what he was doing, what we were doing. How do you hold your employees accountable? How do you work through raises? How do you talk about benefits? I mean, all of the things, right? And it wasn't, again, a nice. thing that we were going to go make money on or we were going to go sell them a product for something that was going to help them in their annual reviews. It wasn't about that. But I can tell you that guy sent me a message later on and he said, you have no idea how helpful this was. And it's really changed my outlook on some of these reviews and some of the things that we're doing. So Again, we have to be stewards of, of being good, right? We got to be a student of the game. We got to know the markets. We got to know what's going on with, you know, with a, maybe a war, with interest rates, whatever it may be. We're on top of all that. But I think there's so much more than just that. That the, the, What I've seen in doing this for 20 years, the best advisors are really spending time on are those things right there. Helping you be better every single day, whether it's in your business, your personal life, have goals. You know, I've got a, a journal here that I use every single day. Um, you know, helping people achieve a future greater than your past. And it's those things, right? Just giving those little nuggets, because I believe that the better you can be and more you can win your morning or win your day, the better you're going to be in life. And if the better you are in life, probably the more success you're going to have in life, which probably means the more money you have in life, which means then there's more for us to manage for you to help you get to the goals and dreams that you have for you and your family. Nice, nice. Well, good. Then you probably learned an awful lot too, just by talking to other business owners and, you, and you've picked up things for running your practice as well in your company. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. I share yeah. that with clients all the time. I say, look, the, some of the best stuff of working with guys like us has been around for a while. I know if you're, let's say you're 45 years old, I know what you're thinking at 55 and 65 and 75, because we've seen it, right? I mean, you've seen it. I've right. seen it. Right. You know what the right. guy or gal that walks away from their paycheck and never has another two week paycheck what they're thinking and what those emotions are and what those feelings are. And I think it's really about that stuff, the transparency, the vulnerability, the learning that we have sharing mm -hmm. that and coaching those clients to make the decisions at 45 or 55 that need to be made because we know what, what happens at 70, 75 and 80 and what, what really happens uh, when it matters the most. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, good. And then earlier we had talked about how you do a lot of really interesting marketing and you're up to 200 uh, podcasts, right? Is that right? Yeah, something maybe yeah, like 275, 285, something like that. Oh, wow. That's great. Well, yeah. Let's talk about how that works. I mean, who do you talk to and what's the purpose of your show? Yeah, so the purpose of it, it's called the Circuit of Success podcast. And it's, it's really to help our clients, our prospects, the community, uh, people all over the country, uh, world for that matter, uh, of helping them be better, 1% uh, better each day, if we can just try to do that. So we look for the best tips and tools for our guests. And it, we've had former Cardinal players or current Major League Baseball players to the founder of Lululemon to the former president of uh, you know Starbucks International. Um, I mean, high education from Harvard and, and different places. I mean, all different walks of life. And we're finding that there's the same common theme, right? Those that bounce back from bad things happening doesn't mean they're real bad but the common themes are we got to bounce back quickly and get over it and and get on with our lives right to be successful um we all have the same fears and emotions in our mind that a lot of the people they never come true to the magnitude we put them in our mind to be uh, and then people have a process and everybody's process can be a little bit different but we try to give the nuggets uh, from that guest whoever that happens to be this week uh, of what they've done to be successful. And it may hit you differently than it hits me. Right. So if I can give, uh, out of a 45 minute podcast, I always say, if I can find 45 seconds to give to somebody, uh, it's worth the time, right? It's worth the time to listen. And then hopefully they implement that. And as you probably know, with your podcast, when you get the notes from people and, and the messages that tell you how something happened and how it helped them in their life, then it's, it just gives you that much more, energy to keep going and keep doing what we're doing. So do you, do you, do you do a pre-discussion with them and understand, or is it more of a free flowing type of a uh, podcast? It's pre, it's pre flowing. So I don't ever give the questions out in advance. Uh, it's more of a, they don't know okay. what's coming. So I, I want to hear that true reaction that from their gut, from their heart uh, type of thing. And so okay. we also will, you know, we'll certainly have, you know, people from our firm come on and we'll talk about estate planning or, or social security planning or what's going on in the markets. And, and we do those types of things. Cause again, those are critically important for us to be able to be a thought leader on that. And people turn to us for that. But I think that's kind of the table stakes, right? If you're going to work with an advisor, if you, if you've been successful and you would expect your advisor to be successful, that's in my opinion, it's just kind of the expectations. Of course, you're going to know what's going on with the market and interest rates in Ukraine and whatever it may be. I mean, I would expect that, right? But what what can we provide from a foundational support that's also going to help you be a better leader, a better husband, a better uh, business owner, a better whatever? Uh, and if we can add that to the investment mix, I think it's a really, really good recipe to help you with your whole life. Nice, nice. Now, how many partners did you have when you started the firm? Uh, myself and Tim Hammett. So he is our uh, co-founder and president uh, of our firm. And uh, I call him the bulldog. I mean, he is the guy that's in the weeds every day, working his butt off to, to make things happen. And is just a really good at, at, you know, whether it's job descriptions and holding people accountable. I mean, that's a strength of his and it's, it's been good and, and very lucky, you know, as I do a lot of reflecting as our eight year anniversary is tomorrow of really just how lucky you are when you make that initial phone call and say, what keeps you here? And then 90 days later, we started a firm. And uh, within 24 to 48 hours, we had 14 advisors come with us. And it, it's just been an amazing run. And now up to 35, 36 advisors and, uh, you know, a couple billion dollars. It's been a it's been a fun ride and blessed to have him as my partner. Nice. Are most of your folks from Northwestern or now is it uh, branching out to other areas? No, they're from all over the place, from different uh, firms and independents and, and uh, just, yeah, so they're all over, which, which again is great because now there's so much 
uh, diversity of thought uh, that goes on. If somebody's got a banking background, somebody's got a trust background, somebody's got an insurance background, somebody has a wirehouse background, somebody's got an independent RIA background. And now we can bring that stuff together in the hallway and, and talk, right? And, and tell old war stories, if you will, uh, of what we had to do when we were 22 years old building a business and what the person from company X had to do to go knock on a door to go build a business. And it's just, it's just neat to, to see that. And again, that diversity of thought of what we've all done to be successful. Uh, and this is that place uh, visionary. We, we have, you know, kind of some rules and expectations and uh, we call it the, I don't know if I can cuss on here or not, Brian, but we, we call it the, the no asshole rule. And uh, that's a rule when we're going through the recruiting process <laughs> of really looking for people that we want to spend time with and, and people that we want to be around and people we know that will lift up our firm and, and help our communities that we all get to live and serve in. And, and that's really important mm -hmm. to us. And that's what, what we stand for. Tell us, tell us about your best success story. Uh, maybe without using names of, of an advisor who's joined your firm and seeing the model you've created really help them flourish and grow. Gosh, yeah. I mean, I could, I could share dozens of those. Um, it, it's just amazing to me where people come from all different walks of life, right? Um, and, and they come into a firm. And again, these people are successful. We're, we're not hiring advisors and there's nothing wrong with this if people are, but our choice is to not hire advisors and then have to train and develop. We want to provide a platform where they can come in and take an already successful life they've had, but then thrive and take it to the next, to the next level. And, and so again, I could share dozens of those, but it's, it's just seeing for me, what makes me as the, you know, the co-founder and CEO of this firm, when I can walk around and look at our advisors, what makes me the happiest is when I see the things that they're doing with their families the vacations they're going on, maybe the home they're building, but the checks they're writing in the community and the boards they set on. And so I'm not trying to go away from your question, but I mean, there, there's dozens of those that are, are people that are just have really changed their life for the better financially. But then they don't just say, this is about me, 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 me. They're involved in everything in the community and giving back. And I just think that's, that's so fun to sit back and watch that and know if I can have just a little sliver of, of, of being a part of that and our team helping provide a platform that's what we want mm -hmm. and it's about feedback mm -hmm. and and whatever we can do to make the, the the firm better and a better spot for you mr and mrs advisor we're all ears we're going to listen to that does mm -hmm. it mean it can all be done no but but can it be done tomorrow maybe not but but if we can implement it and get it done that's what it's about for us and uh, so watching those advisors and their life's change has, has been a tremendous uh, value add for me and for our career Excellent. So, so you built a, a broader platform and you have advisors from different walks of life. Are there any themes that uh, you see kind of across the advisor practices at your firm at Visionary? Yeah, I, I, there are. And I think uh, I feel like a broken record that I, I say this stuff, but I, I do see that it's about people that want to come in and serve their clients and not be told what they have to do. Like they have to come to this meeting. They have to come to this accountability thing. They have to sell this. We have none of that. Right. And, and again, not saying that's wrong, because for me at 22 years old or 23 years old, I wouldn't probably be where I'm at if I didn't have some of those commitments that I had to make early on. Uh, but for us, it's like, this is a place I was joking say, come on in, the water's warm, right? And, but come in and be able to build the practice in the way that you exactly. want to build your practice. And so, uh, but the common theme is uh, comprehensive financial planning, um, work with your clients to the best of your ability on all aspects of their life. Uh, not just be a, just a money manager only or an insurance person only don't, we're not any of those people. It's, it's the full array of everything that we can do for our client. And I think that's, um, that's the common theme that you would see inside, even though they come from all different walks of life, but then they're also family people, family first, community, mm -hmm. and business, right? It's not mm -hmm. business only. This is about, I always talk about my F to the fifth power, your faith, your family, your fitness, so meaning your health, your, uh, your firm and fun. Right. So those F to the fifth power, which one of those five are you making all of your decisions through? And if you can make it through those decisions on those five things, then I think you win long term. Nice. With this pandemic, Brad, I suspect in O'Fallon it's the same way. And are you feeling like things um, are getting better and 
what kind of challenges did you see? I mean, your growth has been amazing, but were there any challenges during the pandemic and how is that changing now? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, I think absolutely there were challenges in the pandemic. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing for us is culture. And when you're not around people for a year, uh, it's hard to have culture. Right? We can have all these Zoom yeah. calls we want, right? But there's still no, there's still no replacement for you and I sitting down and having lunch, or you and I sitting down and right. in, in the office and having a meeting and sitting there eyeball to eyeball, right? You can feel somebody's energy when you're sitting with them in person. Uh, you can somewhat feel it over Zoom, but it's not the same. And so I think that was the hardest part for us is not being around everybody. Uh, I think you lose a little bit of your culture, you lose a little bit of that specialness. Uh, and we did, and, and we're not perfect, right? We lost, we lost some key people um, that were early on. So, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do my thing. And, and so, uh, you know what, great, good for them. And that's okay. Um, but I think it, when I look back, I think the loss of connection and the loss of time with people was a big, big deal. And uh, I feel completely different sitting here in March of 2022 uh, than I felt in March of 2021. Uh, way better, right? Because- yeah we're back, right? Everybody's together and we're, we're doing things and we're in person and we're seeing each other and we're having lunch and we're, you know, doing these things as a firm. Like in May, we have an event coming up that we'll all just be together uh, for a couple of days uh, off away, away from home and be together, the whole firm. And uh, it's just, it's going to be incredible. And, and getting those things back was really, really important. So um, I think it's a great question. Hopefully we all learned a lot through pandemic, uh, but I also learned that this business can be done a little bit differently. Uh, through the pandemic right. as well. Yeah. So we learned some things too. It was a lot of negative, but not all negative. Right? No, absolutely not. I was a person that never believed that people could quote unquote work from home and be productive. I always thought, well, yeah, people work from home and they're sitting around in their sweatpants and they're watching, you know, ESPN and not getting the job done. Right. And, and advisors are a little different because advisors, they got to go out and build their own business or they don't, eat as yeah. much right so i get that part but <laughs> i was always worried yeah. about it from a staffing standpoint and i was i was totally wrong i was totally wrong so mm -hmm. i think it's created more flexibility and freedom for our teammates um to be able to you know if they need to go see their grandson or go do whatever at home and be productive there they can still do it and they're still getting the job done and i was i was amazed i mean 2020 was one of our better recruiting years and we didn't even see yeah. anybody in person and I'm just like, it's just it's a head scratcher for me. How did, so tell us, how did you recruit then in 2020? You just do it by Zoom and then all of a sudden they joined and you never Yeah, it was them? crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Zoom, but, but, but I will tell you that goes back to relationships, right? Mm -hmm. If you have good relationships in the community and uh, whether it's, you know, somebody in our firm or, uh, you know, an employee, an advisor, it came from those relationships and it was a referral from an advisor or from a, a teammate here. Um, that's what happened. And so then that's where that relationship matters. It, like it does in anything in life it matters for our clients. It matters in recruiting. And so a lot of the people that we have in our system right now that are, you know, either have just joined the firm or joining the firm uh, between now and this summer all of those have come from relationships uh, from advisors. And, and I think that's a really, really big deal um, that you can cut out a lot of the mess of having to go out and have, you know, 30 lunches to try to hire one person. We just have a few and, and keep getting good referrals from our advisors. So you haven't really used like uh, recruiters and people like that. You've used more just connections on your team to, to kind of build that culture, right? Yeah. So our chief growth officer, uh, her name is Jana Gregoric. Um, so Jana is, uh, she's not a recruiter. She's our chief growth officer, but she's got her pulse on what's going on. A lot of outreach in the community and our advisors know that if they've got somebody, they talk to Jana, they talk to me. And then either Jana goes and sees them, her and I go and see them together. Uh, like today, when we get done, I'm driving, I got a, I've got a lunch uh, of an introduction from an advisor. And uh, I have no idea how this lunch will be. Uh, but they manage a, a fair amount of money and uh, I mean, a lot of money actually. And, and so it may be a shake hands and say hi and tell little stories, or it may be, yeah, maybe you're coming into the business in you know, a year or six months or whatever it may be, who knows. And so I always say, go out yeah. and play in traffic, take the meeting, uh, do good things mm -hmm. with people. And, and you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So Brett, tell us about you. Um, like, so 
you, you're a high energy guy. You've got great ideas. You've got great themes. You seem like a great leader. And you, with you and Tim, you guys have built a great enterprise. Who got you going? Like, are there mentors that you can think of that were instrumental to you? Ideas or concepts maybe from those mentors that got you where you are? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a laundry list of those people, um, you know, but I, I'd be remiss if I didn't start with my wife, um, you know, the challenge and then also um, the vision, you know, and, and then also my parents. So, I mean, my wife and parents both, I, I would say are the top two people. I mean, that's three people, but, but the top two, if you will, I look at my parents as one and I look at my wife as one. I mean, without them, there's no way I would be where I'm at today. And, you know, seeing my my dad's um, business kind of mindset, uh, my mom's outgoing personality as a kid, you know, not being scared to walk up to the CEO or the trash man, right? And talk to them and, and, and be okay with them and be in the same room with them. And I'm an only child. And so my, uh, my parents would have, my dad would have his teammates or his division over from the bank and I would run around and, and talk to adults all the time. So I was around a lot of adults as a kid. Um, wow. I saw success. There's certain things I wanted. Um, and then my wife, I mean, it's, it's, you know, work it's, it's, I had a very good first year. Um, but my second year was terrible as a financial advisor. I mean, absolutely terrible. And from her learning about the work ethic and the discipline and the showing up every single day and the things that you got to do to be successful in this business, it's tough, right? I mean, could you imagine going back 20 years and starting over? It's really, really tough. <laughs> And I think for her well, to get that. And then, then there was guys that worked at our previous firm. I think of, you know, a guy named Matt and a guy named John. I mean, they were phenomenal, phenomenal people that showed me a vision and uh, gave me that accountability that I needed. And then I just had to foster that. I was always a student of the game trying to learn from the best, right? I just kind of watched mm -hmm. them from afar. I would study. What does that guy do? What's that gal do? And I would then implement that into my life and just steal shamelessly from all these people. So all these ideas that I have are not necessarily original ideas. I've stolen them all from everybody else and just put them together for what works for me. doesn't work for everybody, yeah. but it works for me. Right. Yeah. Well, you're, you're right. And, and uh, you know, I, want, I want to go back to something you said just a second ago about that second year. So it, 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 it I kind of feel like it matters more. I mean, everybody's a hero when things are good, right? Markets are up, everybody's joining, you're growing, it's all exciting. Then you had a bad year, right? In your second year, what happened in that second year? And and how did you how did you get out of it? How did you get your mind out of it? How did you recover from it? Let's talk about that. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I will say, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that what I call the bounce back theory. Again, studying people, I realized the people that had something bad happen bounce back pretty quickly with a game plan on what they were going to do differently to not let that happen again. Mm -hmm. Right. And so mm -hmm. for me, I, I mean, I literally, I'm not kidding you, Brian. I came home. It was December of 2003. I came home, had a terrible year. And I told my wife I was going to hire an assistant. I paused because I'm like, let that set in for a second, even to myself. Right. So I was going to go out and I hired somebody that I had to pay them literally 100% of the same of what I just made that year. Okay. So I'm now I'm going to hire somebody to help me believe in myself, bet on myself that I can, I can do this. Right. And I think that was, there was, I have three or four kind of defining moments of my life professionally. There's a lot of them, but professionally that was one of them because here I am, didn't make very much money, but I'm going to take a hundred percent of that that if I did the same thing the next year, it'd be a hundred percent of it. Now I knew I wasn't going to do the same thing. I had to show up. I had to work. I had to have discipline. Success only comes before work in the dictionary, wow. but I was, I had to go out and work and I had to get after it. And, and so I did that. And that was a defining moment because then I was able to eliminate the things that I wasn't good at and do the things that I was good at. And so for me, that was, the, the moment in 2003 right. going into 2004 that really truly changed my life. Wow. So, so you, you decided to hire someone who was making what basically who would make basically what you made the whole year before. And if it didn't work, it would have been over pretty much. Right. Oh, it'd have been over. You would hit yeah. the wall. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. That would, been, <laughs> that would have been the end. It was existential. Right. 
So, um, yeah. so it sounds like you said, Hey, I really need to face this and I need to take some really strong action, not drastic action, but strong action to build this and yeah. make a bet on myself. And that's what you did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Wow. I bet on myself. And I did that for a while as a financial advisor. And then I had another uh, opportunity in 2005. Um, it, again, I, I would, and I say this for people that are listening that there's probably, you know, young folks in this audience that are listening on how to be a better financial advisor, but I would tell them to bet on yourself. If you're going to show up and do the work, bet on yourself. Right. And that's what all of our yeah. advisors have done. They've bet on themselves. And right. they're phenomenal with it. And so I had that same moment to become a managing director in 2005, where I had mm -hmm. to bet on myself. And I had about 24 hours to decide if I was going to take my expenses from $45,000 a year to $450,000 a year. I had 24 hours to make that decision if I was going to bet on myself, run an office, buy out an office and take it over. And I did it. And, I, and again, it was one of the better decisions at that time. It was the best pro, uh, professional decision I'd ever made, but scary as hell, really, really scary. But again, I'm a believer in you put the right people in the right spots around you, and then you do what you're uniquely qualified to do. Let them do what they're qualified to do. And that's how you can hit a home run in this business. Mm -hmm. So you became managing director. That was at Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, in 2005. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and how big was that operation when you, when you first started as managing director? Gosh, there were, I don't know, three or four of us, you know, three or okay. four advisors uh, and a couple staff okay. folks. Um, yeah. At the time. And that was in O'Fallon as well, or was that in St. Louis or that was in Edwardsville, not? Edwardsville, Illinois. Edwardsville. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Great. we still have an office there now. So our visionary office, we still have an office in Edwardsville. Okay. Excellent. So in 2005, that was the, so the, the step up was your opportunity to be a managing director. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so you've had a history of basically facing tough decisions and, and leaning into it instead of running away from it, which unfortunately a lot of people do. Yeah. No, you're right. And that was just like 2014 when we started Visionary, right? I mean, it was right. another one of those Same bet thing. on yourself moments. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, good. So, so now when you interview these folks on your, on your um, podcast and your show, um, you, you mentioned that many of those folks are similar. Uh, give us some examples there of like maybe somebody that you interviewed you think was really quite interesting and in how they leaned into it. If you can think of anybody off the top of your head. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite stories actually from it is, um, so Chip Wilson is this guy's name. You've probably heard of the company Lululemon. Um, you know, yes. right. <laughs> you go in there, you're going to spend a fortune every time you come out. Right. So, exactly. so that guy, I got a chance to interview him for about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, and I, I say this cause he didn't say this, but I, I looked it up on the internet. You know, he's, he's billion, multi, multi, multi billionaire, um, and founded one of the, the biggest, best companies, in my opinion, in the clothing world out there. Right. And mm -hmm. had a chance, he's up in Canada, had a chance to spend an hour and 20 minutes on an interview and then another 45 minutes with him afterwards uh, on a zoom. And he said something that was interesting. He, he said, I was, what do you say? I was one week away from having to close the doors of Lululemon. And I think what I've learned the most from this podcast is we see the people now, right? We see after the fact, you, you didn't see me when I was 23 right. years old going through hell again with that bad year, right? I didn't see you right, whenever right. you had tough times, right? We just see the right. people we are today. And I think that we have, yeah. we form these opinions that may not be true. And so I've learned yeah. in 280 something interviews that we've all gone through hell and we've all had to get through it, right? To be truly yeah. great at something. And so for Chip yeah. Wilson, it was one week away from not being able to make payroll and having to shut the entire company down. And he That's talked wild. about just going out for a week and pounding the pavement, right? Kicking down doors, asking for the sale, asking for the business. And we think again, to go back, we, would, we don't think Chip Wilson is the guy knocking on doors, do we? We think of him as the billionaire. We don't think of him as that. So he's knocking on doors. He's got people or something else, right? He's not right. doing it himself. Right? Yeah, no, it's him. It's him going out with like these, him. yeah, right. these, these pants and these shirts or whatever and saying, here's, I need the sale. He got a sale from Good Nordstrom's, stuff. I believe. I'd have to listen to it again. But, you know, a big company happened to say, all right, we'll give this guy a shot. They bought just enough stuff to make his payroll for the week. 
He was able to take that <laughs> sale, go make payroll, and then the rest is history, right? And go now get, it's and go massive company. And sell it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so then it just kept going, and then it kept going, and it kept going. But think about the grit that it took for that guy, and being humble uh, to go out and ask for the business in that moment. That, and that's just one of a lot of different scenarios. But one of my favorites, because again, we think of the guy that we see now, not the guy that we we didn't see having to to yeah. go hit the pavement every day. It all looks good now. Yeah, you, know, you look like a success, and he looks like a great success. But yeah. what really happened in the background? What's the yeah. backstory? Yep, right. for sure. So that's what. We, so if our listeners decide to join your your media group and, and listen to all all your podcasts and shows, we're going to hear some themes like that, aren't we? Hundred percent. Yep. From athletes to business owners to authors to uh, success stories. You know, another guy, I think of another guy, you talk about team, how important is team for what we do as financial advisors for those of us listening, but think about being blind and you're going to go up and you're going to climb Mount Everest or you're going to climb, uh, you're going to grand, you're going to uh, canoe through the grand Canyon, kayak through the grand Canyon and you're blind. How about that guy? Right. That was on the podcast and wow. telling that story wow. and about how you're going to hike a mountain where a lot of people die right that have their hearing and their eyesight and are in shape but here's a guy that's blind doing it I mean, that's incredible right and so you think about all these stories that are out there that that, that we got to dial into that because when we think we're down we got to go find inspiration and i'm a firm believer in what you put into your mind and your brain and your ears right what we're listening to who we're talking to who we surround ourselves with that's going to make us better and so when my dad would say that when yeah. I was a kid, I just thought he didn't like my friends, right? And I'd get mad, but it's so true. Right. And so the more stuff I put in that's positive, right. the better I'm going to be long-term and the better I'm going to help people around me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Brett, this has been a really inspiring discussion. And I think all of our listeners are that much better for it. And it's uh, amazing what you've done with your, your firm, with you and Tim, and then building it up the way you have, and then, just the continual inspiration, uh, the discussions with business leaders' success, it, it's just a, a great legacy. So thank you for being with us today on the Financial Advisors Workshop. Uh, is, there any, is there any final message you'd like to leave the financial advisor community? We're basically talking to a few colleagues, guide us, that have built firms and our financial advisors built practices. Is there any other message you'd like to send everybody? Well, I think depending on where they're at in their stage in their in their business, you know, I mean, if they're if it's the young person, I would I would tell them, and I say young, it doesn't necessarily mean age. I'm saying young as being a financial advisor, number of years they've been in the business. I mean, you've got to put in the work. I mean, you've got to show up every single day, even on days you don't want to, uh, and you've got to show up every day and get it done. And, and then for those that are uh, aspiring advisors, has been around for a long time and they've got great businesses. I mean, I think you know the 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 thoughts I would have for them is, is keep building that team and, and keep finding that next generation from a success plan, whatever it may be. Uh, but have a process, have a process for what you do for me. It happens to be a, you know, a daily journal and it, it's a, it's a to-do list. It's my goals. It's my things I'm grateful for the number of like, bottles of water I've taken, but I write down my 90 day goals every single day. And I find it, uh, you know, interesting that the more often you write them down, the greater likelihood that you have of, of achieving those goals. So I would say write them down daily and then do what you got to do every day to make them happen. Right. I think folks that do write down goals and, and they they wake up every day with a reason to get out of bed, uh, they actually get something done. They actually do something. You're a great That's example right. of that, Brett. Well, thank uh, you. So I'm, I'm honored to have been with you and watch your success as we grow also. So um, maybe we'll check in with you again uh, six months, see how things are looking. Uh, get an update on the growth and uh, and hopefully get inspired again. Awesome. Great being with you, Brian. And thanks so much for having me on your podcast. Thanks.